Okay, good day on. Right, this is the uh, Solex carby off my uh, Volkswagen Beetle. Um, I've got an issue in, with this in that it's been um, the butterfly shaft. This is the butterfly shaft here. Is worn and it's been flopping around in there. What that does, uh, for one, you get fuel leaking out of there. But secondly, it draws air in and it affects your idle. And um, I'm having the issue where the it's idling too high and I can't really turn it down without mucking around with the mixture and then it doesn't seem to want to run properly so um, yeah so the and the other thing where it's leaking too with it being worn is it gets all center so therefore you you your butterfly doesn't seal against the venturi of your carburetor so Anyway, I've uh, yeah, I've pulled it apart, and I've discovered that I had these little nylon bushes, and I haven't done in re enough research to know whether that's a standard thing or not. Uh, you know, whether it comes with this recess, or whether somebody else has done that. Um, the actual nylon bush doesn't look like a standard thing to me just because it's split. I would figure if, you know, if it was an original, it wouldn't be split. But anyway, as I said, I haven't done any research, so I don't really know. I'm just guessing here. But I did, uh, I was hoping to find some uh, brass tube that would fit tightly in there and, yeah, reasonable reasonably tied around this butterfly shaft um, but I wasn't able to the best I could do is actually found a dowel this is an engine dowel of probably a Japanese motorbike and uh, yeah it was a tiny bit big so I've put a split in it you probably can't actually see the split I mean, you know you probably just camera would focus you might Anyway, I put a split in it. When it closes up, it's a, a nice tight fit in the body of the carburetor and reasonably tight on the shaft. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, the first thing I'll be doing is I'm going to take all the burrs off this, including the burr on the split that goes down through the centre of it. Because if you don't take them off, it's just going to chew up your shaft. Um, now I'm going to wash the throttle body with acetone. And I'll be coating the outside of this with this um, epoxy. This is, I think it's called Steel Weld or something, but yeah, it's a two part epoxy. So I'll be coating on the outside, and I'll also open it up and rub some of it into that split to seal that up as well. Um, before I start mixing, too, I need to run a tiny bit of grease on the shaft. That's so that the epoxy doesn't actually stick to it. And I'll be putting it in because, you know, I've cut this. It's not, actually, when I file it up, I'll clean up the file. I'll try and get that with just a touch more level. But anyway, I'll be putting the cut edge into the body that way so that I've got a, you know, a clean straight edge on the outer side. Um, the reason for that is, and... This is about a millimetre smaller than the bush that came out of it, which is really good because that gives me just enough room to run an O-ring. So, yeah, when I get it back in there, I'm also going to find an O-ring. I have an O-ring kit, and I'm going to pack an O-ring outside of this bush on either side. And, uh, yeah, and then I'll wash it there, and then the linkages, and... Uh, yeah, and the washer could be interesting. I might have to, yeah, probably have to try several or maybe even cut a bit of plate and do, oh, I'm not sure, punch a bit of plate. Um, 
because you want it just tight enough to hold the, the o-ring into the to the body but you know not rubbing against the linkage or not preventing you doing the linkage up because you've got to be able to do the linkage up tight so it doesn't come under the other thing too when you put this buddy butterfly back on when you go to undo it you notice that the bottoms of the screws are punched they're spread with a punch so they can't come undone and uh, yeah because you don't want them falling down inside your motor I mean for one it'll stop your car be operating properly but yeah it'll do damage to your engine anyway as I said uh, you know I could do some research and you know see if we can get these in a new kit which is probably the best option but for one, I don't have the money to buy a kit anyway. I'm yeah, quite poor at the moment. I've got a whole lot of other things that I can't afford at the moment either. So, And the other thing is I don't want it off the road for two weeks when I'm waiting for these parts to get to this island, island of Tasmania. So, um, yeah, so I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, Yeah, this is a job that you could do on any carburetor. A lot of the carburies too, like, you know, the earlier model, smaller carburies don't seem to have any sort of a bushing in there. They just run the steel shaft straight into the alloy and they, they wear the alloy out. And so the only solution is to ream them out and put a bush in there. But in doing so, you need to be really careful that you get it centred you know, like a professional would ream it out with something that slides on a pin that's anchored on the other side so they get it centre because, you know, if you get it off centre then this butterfly is not going to close properly against you. You know, the throat of the car will be the venturi. So just keep that in mind if you're ever attempting to do the job. And, uh, yeah... The other issue this has been having is it's been flooding and uh, this is sort of my own fault. It's been, I had a, uh, a fuel pump fail. It didn't stop pumping fuel. It just started leaking oil everywhere and I grabbed another one out of my spares box, blew some air through it and put it straight on and because uh, there's all crap coming out of it because it's been sitting in a box for who knows how long, 30, 40 years or something. So, um, you know, I should have washed it out a whole lot better. As I said, I've cleaned the carby twice since then and it's doing it again now, or it was doing it before I put it off, took it off again. So, yeah, I've now bought a second filter, so I'm going to run a second filter now between the fuel pump and the carby. Then we'll get back on and then I'll retune it and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to look that up again. I did watch a video on, from a Volkswagen mechanic on how to tune it, but that was a while back and I've forgotten it all now, so yeah. And for that reason I won't go into tuning because I'm an amateur and there's, yeah, there's professional mechanics showing you how to do these things, so yeah, look up information from Somebody who knows what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I just thought I'd share that with you and uh, yeah, hope it's helpful to somebody. Okay.